So, uh, Syriza's labor market. Most, you know, when I I say that cities are primarily labor market, a lot of people get a little upset because we all love cities, and uh, we consider that cities are much more than labor market. You know, cities are where we have our friends, our family. The cities are where you know we go to the theater, to concert, to museum, to parks. So cities are much more than labor market. However. My point is that without well-working labor market, all these things that we like about cities will not exist. Therefore, when we develop cities, when we think about the development of cities, we have to think that first the labor market has to work as well as possible. Second, this labor market will provide the resources to build all the nice things which can be built into a city and which create this high productivity which again afford us to do all these things. Uh, why, uh, what do we know about a large labor market? The larger the labor market, for some reason, the higher the productivity. This has been shown in, empirically. Uh, you all know that uh, the, the clusters, for instance, uh, which have been identified uh, in China, are already producing, you know, a larger share per population of the, you know, the, the GDP of China than the rest of the country. So when you have large agglomeration of people and if they work as a labor market, because you could have a large agglomeration of people, but if, if transport is very deficient, in fact, this large uh, agglomeration of people uh, fragments into smaller uh, units uh, that, uh, in fact, are much less efficient than the sum of them. So the most important thing is to try to maintain as large labor market as possible. The, what, what limits, the, you know, the size of a labor market is not equal to the number of people or the number of workers which are in an agglomeration. Again, if we think of Beijing, uh, the size of the labor market is really uh, proportional to the number of jobs that people can access I take it a limit uh, in less than one hour. I mean, some people will commute more than that, many of them less than that. But so what limits really the size of labor market, therefore the productivity of cities, is uh, the ability to move from one part of a metropolitan area to another. We know that all our transport system, uh, whether they are in China, in Europe, or in the US, are are not perfect. Therefore, all our labor market, you know, urban labor market, are only a fraction of uh, what they could be if our, uh, you know, transport system were more efficient. I will quote my colleague Remy Prudhomme here, uh, which uh, in, in one of his paper, which is footnote here, says the, the benefit associated with city size are only potential. They are contingent upon the quality of management. Uh, I will go a little further and say, well, uh, they are contingent on the speed of transport. I will, uh, I will uh, briefly uh, describe first the, the pattern of labor mobility. Uh, on this graph, on the, right, on the left, uh, you can see the classic monocentric model, uh, which usually apply in cities of uh, less than one million, where you have a, a large uh, CBD which contains most of the job, and uh, most of the people are, are moving from the suburb to the, to the city center, and in radio concentric movement. Uh, this model uh, is, is a bit theoretical, but it exists mostly in smaller cities. The, the second uh, model uh, that I call the polycentric model, in fact, uh, 
may be represented by cities like, like Los Angeles of Atlanta, where the jobs are practically distributed even less throughout the metropolitan area. And then the movement then of uh, the, the, labor, the, the mobility of labor is not along a uh, line which are, you know, with, with strong, you know, uh, with very defined destination, you know, dispersed origin, but, uh, uh, you know, very limited the destination. On the contrary, there are, there are movements which are all over the city, and most routes are, in fact, uh, have relatively few, uh, you know, few, few, uh, few labor moving in one direction or another. So these are, these are cities where individual transport are in a certain way more efficient than, than, you know, it's very, very difficult to design a transit system which work well in cities which are like that. Contrary to the monocentric model, uh, you know, where, where you know, uh, a transit system work relatively well. Now, those are still relatively theoretical uh, uh, model. The, what I call the composite model, that's the third graph from the left, uh, shows, in fact, the reality in more cities you have a, a CBD, you have a central uh, business district, which, uh, which typically have from 20 to 30% of the job, but 70% of the job, you know, this is a case in, for instance, Paris or, or New York metropolitan area, 70% of the jobs are really in suburbs. So most people go, in fact, from suburb to suburbs, although, uh, again, the, the people who are going to the city center are very important. Very often these are where there are the highest salaries. And so you have then a dual system of, uh, you know, monocentric, a monocentric model where, which is radio, where the, the movement is radio concentric and then one which is more dispersed. Uh, and uh, so here again, we have a problem because while uh, bringing people to the city center is far more efficient uh, with a subway system or a transit system in general, the movement from suburb to suburbs are usually done by individual transport, usually cars, and the car is not very well adapted to uh, urban transport. Uh, you know, the car has been designed mostly for, uh, I, I assume, for, for bringing your family on weekend, but it's not very efficient uh, a vehicle. However, so far we have not found much alternative except maybe a motorcycle. Uh, the, the, fourth, uh, the fourth graph on the right uh, is a graph that I, I, I represent, I always show it, because uh, it doesn't exist in reality, but a lot of urban planners uh, would like to see it existing and dream, excuse me, and dream that it could exist. Uh, it consists in a very large metropolitan area with a lot of centers, but the planners are so clever that uh, they manage to have all the workers live close to their place of employment. So you end up with this image of uh, what I would call the urban village model, where everybody can uh, live relatively close to their workplace and therefore um, a short commute and you can, uh, you know, they can walk or even bicycle to their work. Now, you find that in a, you know, in a number of master plans that I have reviewed in the last uh, 20 years, periodically I found this model. And again, it's attractive because if it could exist, it will solve a lot of problems. The problem is that it doesn't exist. And uh, for people who dream of it, it in fact, uh, you know, distract resources from the real problem. The, what I have uh, at the beginning at the beginning of this talk, uh, I've been talking about uh, labor market. And if the labor market is as large as possible, the productivity is higher. We can see that on this model you know, of the urban village where everybody work close to his work, uh, live close to his work, uh, in fact, it's a fragmentation of the labor market. So if such a city could exist, its productivity would be probably rather low. It will be the productivity of a lot of small towns. It will be not the productivity of a metropolitan area.
And uh, I will give an example of a uh, labor market fragmentation, uh, how it works. For instance, here on this graph, uh, you know, I, I have represented a city on a, on a linear graph like that from A to E, and all the jobs, I assume that all the jobs are concentrated in three centers. One is B, the other C, and the other D. And the population is in the yellow area here, and uh, the distance, you know, from A to C is one hour and so on between all the center. So you, we see here that a fraction of the population here, which is located between B and D, has access yeah. to all the jobs yeah. in less than one hour, but that, that uh, the people who are living in area between A and B, or D and E, have access only in less than one hour to a fraction of the job. So although, uh, let's say, a, uh, a city organized that way could have a, uh, a labor market, you know, a potential labor market of, say, 10 million people, uh, the real size of the labor market will be much less because the number of people cannot access the job. The, the job of the planner, of the transport planner, is to try to integrate this labor market in as large as possible. Now, sometimes it will not be possible, but that's what we should try to do. Uh, Alain, uh, uh, Alain yes. this is Zhenliu, and we lost the PPT. Uh, oh, oh. You, you lost uh, the PPT. We don't see the slide uh, anymore. Oh, you don't see the slide. Ah, okay, right. sorry. Uh, um, Sorry. Take your time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I sorry. One second. Start. Start. Yeah. Can you see it? Uh, looks is coming. Just a moment. Ah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's back. Thank you. Okay. Maybe maybe I should just uh, stay on the. Don't hit that button. Yeah, yeah that, that that's yeah, be good. I, sh yeah. I should just stay on the slide and not try to. Uh, you you will deprive of seeing my face. Uh, I'm sorry about that. 在我们这一边，我们想把他的头像往上移，但是这个系统不能够移开，所以那个 PPT 大家有一个角看不见啊，抱歉了。Okay, yeah, please. Okay, so. Uh, uh, I show on, on this slide, I show another example of uh, uh, what happened, again, in, in a very theoretical... Uh, I've lost my... I've lost my ah, here it is. Uh, uh, what happened in a uh, theoretical graph where I have cities... I have cities which are, uh, you know, circular cities, all the same. Uh, the one on the left, on the top left, uh, all the jobs are in a, in a CBD centralized. And so from the periphery, in uh, one hour, you can reach, you know, anybody can reach uh, all the job in one hour. You see that the same city, when the job are dispersed in three s smaller centers, uh, you can still reach it in one hour, but uh, a longer distance that imply that if you want to have a, a labor market which has the same size as the other, uh, the speed of transport will have to be higher for, again, assuming that the city size is exactly the same, the, the built up area the same. Uh, the, the graph on the top uh, right uh, represents all the jobs are dispersed, and then the speed, again, if you want to everybody to reach potentially any job in the city, uh, the speed of transport will have to be uh, faster. You know, in one hour, they will have to cover the entire city. Now, what happened in, in most city, of course, is not like that. This, that's ideal. It's, uh, it's represented on the, at the bottom of the slide, uh, where you have, uh, you know, here in one hour, uh, most people will reach only a small part of the labor, you know, of the potential number of jobs. So the labor market will be fragmented, and we could see, uh, you know, about the same thing for the other schemes. You know, the uh, if so again here the the emphasis is that speed of transport is important. You know, if you want to reach the productivity, uh, you know, that that will. Uh, 
allow you to uh, to take the, the optimum benefit of a very large labor market uh, that you can have in large metropolitan area. Now here is a graph uh, produced by one of my colleagues, uh, David Levinson. Uh, he has measured horizontally you have here uh, commuting travel time in minutes, you know, from zero to 60 minutes. Uh, vertically, the number of jobs which are accessible, you know, in this time from zero to seven million. And you see here uh, the, sorry, the performance of uh, uh, different American, North American city, Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, Washington, and Atlanta. You see that, sorry, at, uh, as you, uh, you know, as the commuting time uh, increase, uh, the number of jobs, of course, accessible increase, but you see that uh, those cities have very, very different performance. You know, in 30 minutes, uh, in Los Angeles, interestingly enough, you, uh, you have practically, you, you can reach practically about twice as many jobs as in Washington, D.C., and, uh, uh, you know, and even more than in New York. It's only when you get uh, at more than 50 minutes that in New York you start having a much larger labor market because New York is, of course, much larger than Los Angeles. So it's all depend, in fact, on the, on the speed of the transport system. Just a reminder, again, in a metropolitan area, all the trips are organized. This is a metropolitan Paris, and uh, in gray here, I have represented, I have represented the, the uh, you know, the greater area of Paris in the metropolitan area. You know, the the tourist area, the, the area which is, uh, you know, most people know about Paris are just uh, this little dot at the center, and. It, if you had uh, all the trips which are going to the center of Paris, basically you get about 30% of the trips uh, are either, either within the, you know, the municipality of Paris or toward the municipality. Most of the trips are uh, you know, between suburb to suburbs, and those trips are part, again, of the labor market of Paris and of the, what created the wealth of Paris. We do not know very well how to handle those trips. We know how to handle the trips toward, you know, the, the city center, you know, by, we have radial uh, suburban rail, we have a metro system within Paris, which are, you know, relatively well performing. We still do not know very, very well how to handle uh, those trips from, uh, uh, you know, suburb to suburb. And if we do not handle those trips well, it means, in fact, that the labor market of uh, Paris is fragmented, and therefore, compared to the number of people and number of jobs which are there, uh, you know, the productivity is not as high as it could be uh, if the transport system was working better. I have here another another example. Uh, this time it's Seoul, Seoul metropolitan area. You see the, the municipality of Seoul is here, you know, the, the, uh, about uh, 10 million people live here, but the region of Seoul is much larger, and again, part the, the labor market should be considered to be as the entire region of Seoul. We are talking about uh, 22, 24 million people uh, at, in, in 2010, probably more at this moment. Uh, again, within Seoul, Metropoli within Seoul uh, municipality, the transport uh, work relatively well. They have a superb uh, you know, transit system, uh, the coordination, which is the bus and the metro are very good. And uh, so here, uh, you know, it works well. We still do not know how to integrate really uh, the the rest of the people? That mean another 10 million people who live in the in the in the suburbs. You know, how how do they have access to the full labor market? My guess, I have no data on that, but my guess is that this labor market is fragmented. Therefore, the potential productivity that Seoul will have if it has a uh, a uh, you know a, an integrated labor market is not fully met. Uh, just uh, uh, to show the trend, this is a graph which shows horizontally the distance from the CBD of Seoul 
to the periphery, so from zero to 77, 78 kilometer, and vertically, I am showing uh, in blue the, excuse me, the number of jobs, and in red, the population. Uh, what I'm showing here is not the total number of jobs or population, I'm showing the additional population and job which was added between two census, between 2000 and 2010. What we see is that the population in the center of Seoul has decreased, and most of the increase in population, uh, you know, shown in red on my, uh, on my graph here, uh, is mostly, you know, between 20 and, and 40 kilometers. So it's a suburban population, very likely also to work to work in suburbs. Uh, in blue, I have uh, the additional jobs. So you see that relatively there were more jobs which were created closer to the center. But if you look at all the job created, uh, you know, the majority of the job were created at more than 20 kilometers from the city center. So our transport, you know, our transport system have to adapt to this pattern. Many of my colleague urban planner dream of selecting first uh, a system of transport, like a subway, for instance, or a BRT, and saying, "Well, now we are going to design, we are going to design a land use system." which will optimize the operation of our metro system or our BRT. I think it's a terrible mistake. And, uh, you know, I am, you know, I am, I think, uh, you know, there are not many people who think that way, unfortunately, I think. Uh, I think it's a terrible mistake. Uh, those jobs that I show here in Seoul are not there by chance. You know, if an entrepreneur decided to create an enterprise at 30 kilometers from the center of Seoul, I think they must have a, a very good reason for it. So, uh, so the planner cannot decide that this is not a good location uh, because, uh, you know, he doesn't know how to, to provide the transport system for this area. We have to take you know, this land use pattern seriously, and we have to adapt our transport system to this land use pattern. Now, there is one aspect also which is important, which is a little beyond transport, but I think uh, it is linked to transport, it's affordability of land and floor space. If you have a large metropolitan area, if you want to have workers uh, to access jobs, uh, they have to be able to to buy or, or to, to locate in a residence, a house or an apartment that they can afford. Uh, and again here, uh, the, the system of transport is very important in, uh, to, to increase the supply of land which is accessible to job. Only the transport system can do that. If the transport system doesn't work well, uh, a worker has two choices really either to live in a dormitory relatively close to their job but in a very very small area probably in not very good condition you know you you have seen uh, you know in, in you know in a lot of uh, cities of asia uh, people living in basement for instance and like that these are people who are, are trying desperately to find a place to work not too far from their job and uh, they are obliged to consume very little because the transport system doesn't work very well and do not allow them to uh, to find a place uh, which is much cheaper. So uh, I think here this affordability has to be taken in is part of a transport problem. It's not just a housing issue which has to be treated separately. The the ideal of the compact city where uh, you know all area of the city should be high density. Uh, I think is also a mistake in terms of affordability because it, you know, if you have a high density, it means there is a high demand. It means that the land is expensive and the floor space is expensive. Uh, I think that when uh, we are talking about large metropolitan area and in particular large city clusters, we should not try to compact them. We should, we should acknowledge that there will be densities which will be different. There will be very high density in the, you know, in the CBD, in the city center, in many centers probably, but there will be area which will have lower densities and 
probably uh, that might be area which will be also cheaper for both entrepreneur and uh, and uh, you know and, and for housing so housing affordability is linked to efficient transport uh, now let us try to you know this was still a little theoretical let us try to discuss a bit uh, you know what would be the operational implication for the city cluster in china first those clusters are much more complex uh, than what I have seen so far, you know, I, I, what that I have shown so far, I have shown, you know, uh, you know, Paris metropolitan area and Seoul. Uh, those are still compared to the city cluster which are now in China. Those are relatively simple uh, metropolitan arrangement. So you will have a variety of trips. It's absolutely indispensable that a diversity of transport mode and speed of transport. Uh, will have to coexist in this, uh, you know, if you can want to maintain the productivity of those uh, structure. Uh, if if you man in if this very large cluster, you know, we are talking in China of cluster of you know from 30, 40 to 60 million people, and maybe in 10 or 15 years of 60 million people, if you could manage to improve the transport to the point that the labor market is uh, you know very close to the number of job available in the city you will be able to reach a productivity uh, which has never been seen before you know a, 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 an urban productivity which will be extraordinary but that again will depend on the performance of the uh, you know of the transport system uh, here is a map, you know, th this is part of the, uh, you know, the policy of China now, which, which envisages those, those clusters. And, you know, uh, by the way, those clusters were not planned. They, they developed as a response to the development of the economy of China. This uh, spatial arrangement was not something which was decided somewhere. It, it's just a, a response to, you know, the response of entrepreneur to uh, to the development of the economy of China, it was uh, so. What we have to have to to do now is to face this reality and develop a transport system which will integrate those. Uh, you see here, for instance, the complexity of those things. Uh, here I have have not a number of people, but I have the uh, you know the number of cities which have to be integrated in one market. Uh, you see that this is uh, really impressive in the Beijing Tianjin Ebe uh, you know cluster. Uh, here at least uh, 28 cities, but we will see that there are also uh, a lot of uh, uh, beyond this city. There are a lot of areas with relatively low density, but which are part of the market. For instance, I'm showing here a. Uh, I'm showing you Beijing and Tianjin and, and Binai, the port, uh, but and part of uh, you know part of Hebei, but not not the entire Hebei, you know. And again, in grey, I've shown what is really urban, what is developed. Uh, what we have here, you know, what I would call the the, the three traditional city that we see, we see Beijing with 13 million people. Uh, you know, within the six ring road, we have measured it within the six ring road, which is a, a again a, a, a more a traditional city, and then uh, changing within the third ring road, practically five million people, and then being high about close to a million people. Now, outside those, you know, and relatively in those three dense city, we know more or less how to make trans you know how to to provide transport you know those transport you know uh, you know subway system brt combination of uh, uh, you know of buses uh, we can probably solve the problem uh, but we still have in in what is shown on this map we still have uh, you know, 50, uh, well, practically 16 million people in a dispersed, you know, dispersed population there. Small town, smaller town, or even villages. Those people are part of the labor market. A lot of entrepreneurs 
will not be able to afford you know, the high price of Beijing or Tianjin or Beihai, and they are going to locate somewhere in the center land. And uh, so we have to provide a system to, uh, for these people to reach the entire labor market. So far, the choice we have is you know, a traditional subway system or a, a bus system, and we have individual cars and motorcycle. Uh, none of them are, are complete, you know, are, are very satisfactory for to deal with this, uh, you know, very large, uh, very large conurbation. Uh, you know, again, if you think that, uh, uh, if you agree with me that the size of the labor market is absolutely indispensable, you know, to maximize it if you want to increase the productivity of those cities. If you think that. Uh, Everybody can, in a large conurbation like that, everybody can work close to their place uh, of residence, then of course this is not a problem. But I don't believe this is a model we have to, to go through. So, uh, again here, what, what do we need for, to, to do that? Uh, I don't want here to... Uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to anticipate and, and to, to propose a, a transport system for such a complex area. I have no idea personally. Uh, what I know is, is one thing, is that uh, the system of heavy rail, you know, or metro, is excellent for, very high, for the very high density area or to link two very high density area together. So far, for the other area, uh, people are using cars or motorcycle. The car has a problem, has two problems. Well, first is pollution, but I think that pollution, we are, uh, we are on the way to solving it through technology. We can imagine that in a few years, uh, most cars will be electric and that uh, hopefully electricity will be uh, produced, you know, with uh, non-polluting means. Uh, it's, you know, it's not there yet, but it's thinkable. Uh, however, one thing that the current car, you know, the no technology can solve with the current car is uh, the, the amount of road space they use. You know, a car going at uh, 40 kilometers an hour uh, use 80 uh, square meter of road space. This, in a large cluster than, uh, you know, the, the, that we have seen, this 80 square meter uh, of road space is far too much for one passenger. And, uh, there is no way to compress it at this moment unless we completely change our system of uh, individual car. So one possibility uh, would be first to have much smaller car, uh, which will have a, a, a less impact. But the other will be, of course, uh, you know, the self-driving car, which will reduce the need, uh, you know, for space between cars when they when they run at higher speed. Uh, there will be also a possibility of even uh, rather than having your own car is to, to rent a car when you needed one, you know, to have a system, uh, you know, maybe like, like Uber or any other system, a, a system of rental cars or a system, you know, linking passengers uh, and their destination much more closely, which will allow uh, you know, cars to carry three or four passengers and still uh, be much more efficient than the normal taxi that we have and collective taxi. And there are a number of possibilities like that. The, the important thing is that to, to be aware that what we are facing here in China in particular, uh, in those, uh, uh, you know, in those clusters, we are facing a completely different problem from the one we are used to solve. You know, this is not metropolitan Paris or London or, or, or New York. It's something much bigger and, and I would say quite different. Now, like in nature, when you change scale, usually the structure have to change too. You cannot just replicate at a higher scale a structure which is successful at a smaller scale. For instance, this is why, uh, you know, we don't see flies uh, which are 20 meter long. You know, as a fly get larger, then it has a limit. So you have to, to change completely the structure of the animal. Now, I think that 
this is what uh, we have here. Uh, when I look at those uh, Chinese city cluster, which, if you look at the population of the Pier River Delta, you know, you, you end up with uh, 35, 40 million, probably in a few years, close to 50 million people. Uh, this, is, this is the size of a very large country in Europe, you know. And here we are talking about about this, you know, maybe not a city, but an urban cluster. And again, if you accept the idea that if you could integrate as much as possible the labor market, the productivity will increase and uh, make everybody, you know, more affluent in the entire country. I think it's worth it to to look at what type of solution uh, will be required to provide transport to those very large and complex uh, 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 complex system. And I think that you will have to have a, uh, a combination of uh, heavy rail, heavy rail uh, for large distance, but the heavy rail will not give the door-to-door the -door transport. So you will need to complement it not by bus system or feeder bus or thing like that, but by a system which will pick up passengers at station and bring them to the door of their destination. That means an individual mean of transport or semi-individual mean of transport will have to be combined with those two. Alain, so this is, Alain, yes, this is the message me. now. Uh, excuse uh, me, you have, uh, have two finished. more minutes. You are finishing, right? I have finished. I have okay. finished. Yes, yes. And do you still have more slides that we lose your uh, PPT? Sorry? Do you still have more PPT to show? No, 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 that's my last one. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, go, go on, please. Yeah. Yeah, please uh, the, 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 the finish your conclusion. Yeah, that, that's, so my conclusion is that, that's, you know, uh, the, the whole idea of this labor market is that we, we have to take advantage of the potential of increasing the size of those labor market, but they are entirely dependent on a system of transport that we do not know how to do right now. And that, uh, you know, multiplying, uh, you know, replicating uh, just what we know, like, you know, having 10 Beijing, one close to another, will not solve the problem. That's not the way those clusters work. So we will have to adapt the transport system to this mix of very high density uh, cities and lower density suburbs where a lot of population and a lot of job will be created. So this is the end of my talk now. Thank you very much.